Welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to take photos and turn them into 3D printable works of art, just like this. These are great for gifts um, and, you know, just something really cool that you can make. And I know you can make these online through like custom generators, but I want to show you how to do these, uh, you know, kind of custom and really understand how to do this effect. So let's go ahead and dive in. And you can use any photo that you want. You can also download these photos if you want to just follow along with these. Or, you know, what I encourage is just use maybe your favorite photo. So let's go ahead and dive in. We'll go a new project. And we don't need Suzanne the monkey, so goodbye, Suzanne. And I've got my, my Blender project set up for my 3D printer. So hopefully you do too. But what we want to do is first add our photograph. So make sure you're in your flexible design. And whoop, I almost forgot. So always remember to save. So let's go file, save as. And I just have a Blender folder here. And we're going to call this 3D Photo. Save as. And now we can get rocking. So first thing, make sure you're on flexible design, your little collection. If not, you can scroll right here and you should see a new collection. So just make sure you have a new collection and call it flexible design. And then once you've done that, we can go to our textures tab. It looks like a little grid down here at the bottom. And what we want to do is create a new texture. So just click on new and it should say type image or movie. And we're going to use an image and just go down to the bottom. You should see a little uh, twiddle down that says image and do open and then from here you're going to navigate to your photo so i have a reference photos folder and we'll just use this one here of my lover lady amber and let's rename it so just double click where it says texture and call it anything we'll call it we'll just call it amber for simplicity and there we go so now it's kind of like loaded into Blender's memory bank uh, for textures. And what I want you to notice uh, is this image size down here. It's in the image settings properties, but right here you should see the resolution of your photo. And just keep that in mind because we're going to use that right now. So what we want to do now is create a plane to put this photo onto. So make sure your 3D cursor is in the center. If it's not, you can do Shift S and do Cursor to World Origin, and that will make it appear back. And now we're going to add a plane. So how do we do that? We're going to do Shift A to add something, and we're going to do Mesh Plane. And notice it's really, really tiny. If you hit period on your numpad, it'll you know zoom you in there, and it is super tiny. So just go ahead and click anywhere to confirm that. Let's go to our Item tab. And it's two millimeters by two millimeters. If we zoom out, you know, it's extremely small. So now what we want to do is use these numbers that I was talking about to make this plane the exact same size as our photo. But we don't want to type these numbers in, you know, just as they are, because they would be really huge. It would, you know, this photo would be bigger than our 3D printer. So what's cool about Blender is that you can kind of let Blender do the math for you. So what we're going to do is put the first number, 640, into the X dimension. So make sure you have your plane selected. Click on the X. Type in your first photo dimension. Mine is 640. Then we're going to do a slash or divided by 5. And then Blender will do the math. Just hit enter. And there we go, 128. And we'll do the same thing for this one, 398. So we'll just click here, 398 divided by 5. Boom. And there we go. So now we, if we zoom out, we've got something, you know, that's pretty cool. That's got a, that's got a nice size to it. So that essentially is the, the resolution or, you know, shape of our photograph. And you can scale this up, you know, if you want it to be smaller or bigger, but I'm just going to leave it as is. And notice that our scale is all out of whack. So how do we fix that? All you have to do is do control A and that will let you apply the scale. And watch what happens to the scale over here. Bloop. Now it's reset to one, and that just helps Blender. Um, you know, anytime we're using modifiers, that'll help um, 
you know, make sure all the math stays even and easy for Blender to calculate. <laughs> so now what we want to do is take this into edit mode. So you can hit tab or just switch over into edit mode. And it's just one polygon here, just four points, but we need some resolution. So to do that, we're going to make sure you have everything selected. If you don't, just hit A and that will select all. And we're going to go to edge. And then right here, we have subdivide. So go ahead and click subdivide and you should see this little guy pop up here in the bottom left. So click on that and it says number of cuts. We just want to max it out, like do like a hundred. So notice there, we've got a bunch of little, you know, subdivision surfaces, but we need a little bit more. So let's do it again. Make sure you have everything selected. So just click A, edge, subdivide, and then maybe do two. And that'll be, you know, you can always do more than that if you want, or if you have a fast computer, but I'm just going to keep it kind of low. So once you've done that, just go ahead and hit tab. It looks exactly the same in, in uh, object mode, but notice at the bottom, we have about 91,000 faces, almost 92,000. So that's kind of what you're aiming for, something in that ballpark. Now let's put this photograph onto this plane and really make sure that you you know, you don't skip this step. Uh, I've had a few students in the past that uh, forget to subdivide and it won't work if you don't subdivide. So just remember to subdivide. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do the next step, which is make sure you have your plane selected. And we can go ahead and rename this plane. Maybe call it like Amber 3D Photo. So go ahead and rename it anything you'd like. And then once you've got that selected, we're going to go to the gear icon where the modifiers are, and we're going to add a modifier called displace. Third column, fourth one down. Go ahead and click on that, and nothing happens. And that's because we have to tell this modifier which photo to use. And remember how we loaded in that photo at the very beginning? We're going to use this little checkerboard, and with a little drop down, click your drop down, and we'll just add amber. And there we go. Look at that. Does not look right at all, but um, we're getting somewhere, so that's good. But uh, what you want to do to make it look like a photograph is change it from local to UV. Hey, and there we go. So we've got, we're getting there. We're getting something going, but the photo is kind of, you know, everything's popping up. So I want to do it the other way. So easy way to flip that is just for strength, do like negative two. There we go. And that just inverts it. And uh, let's go over to our EV and maybe turn off our lights. So if you have any lights in your scene, go ahead and turn them off. And I'm going to put a light right here on the moon. And an easy way to do that is with your 3D cursor. And we could go up here and click on 3D cursor and click right here. But I found a new trick that I think is really fun. And that is to hold shift on your keyboard and then right click. And that will quickly let you, you know, move your 3D cursor without having to switch tools. So I love that. Uh, so I just want to share that with y'all. So just right shift, right click on, you know, somewhere on your photo. And let's do shift A to add something. And we're going to add a light. And we can just do a point light. It's going to be very, very... Uh, weak. There is a light there, but it's just very, very tiny. So maybe for the strength, we can crank it up a little bit. So make sure you still have your point light selected. Go to your light tab, and that only appears if you have the light selected. And for the power, we're just going to type in like one. Hey, hey, and now we've got something. I'm going to just grab that light. So make sure you have your light selected. Hit G and then Z. Hey, oh, that's cool. So just kind of, you know, play around, have some fun. And you can only see this effect if you're in Eevee. So if I was in, you know, solid mode, it just looks normal. So make sure you're in Eevee. You can do Z. Make sure you're in rendered. And there we go. So this is pretty cool, but we can't 3D print it because it's just like, kind of like a piece of paper. There's no geometry. It's just a flat plane. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to make this 3D printable and add a base. So let's go ahead and jump into the next video and let me know in the discussions up in the top right if you have any questions about this lesson.